This video provides an overview of the key concepts covered in Chapter 12, Managing Inventories and Supply Chains. Top management needs to understand the role that inventories play in a company's financial performance, operational efficiency, and customer satisfaction, and strike the proper balance in meeting strategic objectives. Inventory can be defined simply as any asset held for future use or sale. Inventory management involves planning, coordinating, and controlling the acquisition, storage, handling, movement, distribution, and possible sale of raw materials, component parts and sub-assemblies, supplies and tools, replacement parts, and other assets that are needed to meet customers' wants and needs. There are also four typical types of inventory maintained throughout the value chain, before, during, and after production. The first is raw materials, components, sub-assemblies, and supplies, which are inputs to manufacturing and service delivery processes. Then there's work in process, or WIP, which consists of partially finished goods in various stages of production that are waiting for their processing. There's finished goods inventory, which is completed products ready for distribution or sale to customers. And finally, there's safety stock, or additional inventory amounts that are kept over and above the average amount required to meet demand. In this visual, you can see how the different types of inventory are present at different stages of the value chain, with raw materials and other components coming from suppliers, and repair and replacement safety stock ready to support the customer. It's also important to note that inventory is sourced from all over the world now thanks to global supply chains. Even something as simple as a hamburger is an international effort with ingredients sourced from any number of countries. Many firms and customers are moving to support environmentally preferable purchasing or EPP, also known as green purchasing, which is the affirmative selection and acquisition of products and services that most effectively minimize negative environmental impacts over their life cycle of manufacturing, transportation, use, and recycler disposal. Inventory managers deal with two fundamental decisions. The first is when to order items from a supplier or when to initiate production runs if the firm makes its own items. And two, how much to order or produce at each time a supplier or production order is placed. Inventory management is all about making trade-offs among costs associated with these decisions. Inventory costs can be classified into four major categories. The first is ordering or setup costs, and these are incurred as a result of work involved in placing orders with suppliers or configuring tools, equipment, and machines within a factory to produce an item. Inventory holding or carrying costs are the expenses associated with carrying inventory. Shortage or stockout costs are those associated with inventory being unavailable when needed to meet demand. A unit cost of the SKU is simply the price paid for goods purchased or the internal cost of producing an item. One of the first steps involved in analyzing inventory problems should be to describe the essential characteristics of the environment and inventory system that follow. There are eight general characteristics of inventory. A stock keeping unit or SKU is a single item or asset stored in a particular location. This is necessary to determine the number of items in inventory. The nature of demand is also important, and demand can be either independent or dependent. Independent demand for a SKU is unrelated to the demand for other SKUs and needs to be forecasted. For example, coffee and donuts may not be directly related to each other, so demand for each of them needs to be forecasted separately. Dependent demand, on the other hand, is directly related to the demand of other SKUs, and so doesn't need to be forecasted. For example, Coffee cups are directly related to the sales of coffee, and since coffee demand is forecasted, the demand for cups doesn't have to be. Demand can also either be static or dynamic. For example, demand for coffee at Starbucks is generally pretty stable regardless of season. Conversely, dynamic demand varies over time. For example, demand for cold frappuccinos at Starbucks varies based on season. In inventory problems, we need to know the lead time, which is the time between placement of an order and its receipt. If a store runs out of an item, it experiences a stockout or the inability to satisfy the demand for an item. And finally, stocked out items go on a back order if a customer is willing to wait for the item. Inventory suffers from what I call the Goldilocks problem. If we don't have enough, we stock out and lose sales, and if we have too much, we incur costs. The trick is to get it just right, and that's actually pretty complicated. One of the simpler ways of managing inventory is through ABC inventory analysis. ABC analysis gives managers useful information to identify the best methods to control each category of inventory. Class A items require close control by operations managers. They typically account for a large dollar value, somewhere between 60 and 80 percent, but account for a relatively small percentage of total items, somewhere between 10 and 30 percent. Class C items need not be as closely controlled and can be managed using automated computer systems. They typically account for a small dollar value, somewhere between 5 and 15 percent, 
but a large percentage of total items, perhaps 50% or more. Class B items fall somewhere in the middle. Here's what a breakdown of what inventory items might look like under ABC analysis, with A items representing about 65% of the dollar value but close to 25% of items, B items represent less than 25% of the total dollar value and about 25% of items, and Class C represents about 10% of total dollar value but about 15% of the total items. There are three general types of inventory systems. The first is a fixed quantity inventory system or FQS. Here, the order quantity, or lot size, is fixed. That means that the same amount, Q, is ordered every time. For example, a window manufacturer might order in fixed quantity of 500 panes every time an order is placed. In this system, the inventory position at any time is the on-hand quantity, OH, plus orders placed but in transit, called schedule of receipts, or SR, plus any back orders, or BO. So, IP is equal to OH plus SR minus BO. The reorder point in a fixed quantity system is the value of inventory position that triggers a new order. Here's what a fixed quantity system looks like under stable demand. The horizontal blue line, R, represents the reorder point. So as the inventory position or IP falls and then reaches that point, an order is placed for the exact same quantity every time. In this example of stable demand, the drawdown of inventory is constant and predictable, resulting in the time between orders, or TBO, and the lead time, L, to be the same every cycle, and stockouts don't occur. Here's what a fixed quantity system looks like under variable demand. In this case, the drawdown of inventory is different, resulting in reaching the reorder point at different times. Therefore, replenishment orders are also placed at different times. Here, the time between orders and lead time can be very different every cycle, and because demand is not predictable, stockouts can occur. One of the most common models used to manage fixed quantity inventory systems is the economic order quantity, or EOQ model. This is a classic economic model developed in the early 1900s that minimizes the total cost, which is the sum of the inventory holding costs and the order cost. The approach can be reduced to a simple formula, the derivation of which is described in greater detail in the chapter. Suffice it to say that the economic order quantity, Q star, also known as the optimal order quantity, is equal to the square root of 2 times the demand times the carrying cost divided by the holding cost. There are six key assumptions behind the EOQ model. First, only a single item or SKU is considered. Second, the entire order quantity Q arrives all at once. Third, only two costs are relevant, order or setup cost and holding cost. Fourth, stockouts are not allowed. Fifth, demand for the item is constant and is continuous over time. Basically, the demand is stable. And finally, the lead time is constant. Here's what an EOQ model looks like. Think of toothpaste at Walmart. Initially, a fixed order is placed and sold evenly over a one-week period. At some point, a reorder point is reached and an order is triggered. Then at the exact time the last tube of toothpaste is scanned at the till, the next order of toothpaste just arrived on a truck at the loading dock and is being received into inventory. Many suppliers offer discounts for purchasing larger quantities of goods or services. This often occurs because of economies of scale, shipping larger loads, from not having to break apart boxes, or simply as an incentive to increase the total revenue. The EOQ model can be adapted to allow for quantity discounts by including the purchase cost of the item into the equation. As we saw in our variable demand illustration, stockouts happen, and they happen often. Have you ever been to a store looking for a particular item only to be disappointed to find that they're sold out? One of the ways companies plan to avoid stockouts is through carrying additional safety stock or planned on hand inventory that acts as a buffer to reduce the risk of stockout. The amount of safety stock inventory to hold can be determined based on the desired service level of company wishes to maintain. The service level is the desired probability of not having a stockout during the lead time period. The higher the service level, the more safety stock a business will carry. The second type of inventory system is a fixed period system or FPS, which is also known as a periodic review system. Here the inventory position is checked only at fixed intervals of time, T, rather than on a continuous basis. A vending machine might follow a fixed period system where it's restocked on a regular basis as the owner makes regular rounds. The two important features of a fixed period system include the time intervals between reviews or restock and the replenishment level, or how much. Here's what a fixed period system might look like. Here, the lead times and time between intervals is the same, but the amount of inventory might differ every time an order is placed, requiring a different amount to be replenished. For example, a vending machine that's restocked every week can hold 30 Mars bars. 
but may have 10 left this week, requiring only 20 to be restocked. But next week, the machine can be sold out of Mars bars, requiring 30 to be restocked. The last inventory model is the single period inventory model. The single period inventory model applies to inventory situations in which one order is placed for a good in anticipation of a future selling season where demand is uncertain. At the end of the period, the product has either been sold out or there's a surplus of unsold items to sell for salvage value. Single period models are used in situations involving seasonal or perishable items that cannot be carried in inventory and sold in future periods. A good example might be Christmas trees. Here, we're concerned primarily with two costs. The salvage cost, or CS, which is the cost per unit of overestimating demand, and the shortage cost, CU, which is the cost per item of underestimating demand. Here, we look for the optimal quantity that satisfies this equation, where the probability of demand being less than or equal to Q star is the shortage cost divided by the sum of the shortage cost plus the salvage costs. Finally, using sophisticated inventory systems or even Microsoft Excel, simulations can be employed to help manage inventory. Simulations are used extensively to improve process flows and supply chain effectiveness. For inventory problems, we can use simulation to seek the lowest possible inventory cost through experimentation with different values of order quantity and reorder point. Inventory can be considered a necessary evil for businesses. It's necessary because in order to make sales to customers, you have to have it, but it's an evil in the sense that it's so costly to purchase and hold. Take automobiles, for example. Consider how many unsold cars there are in inventory at a single Ford dealer in a city. Then think of how many Ford dealers there are in that city, then state, then across the country. Then think about how many other car manufacturers have unsold vehicle inventory in the country. Or walk into a Walmart or Home Depot and marvel at the tens of thousands of products on the shelves in the single store. That's a lot of inventory. Inventory management is therefore a delicate balancing act where managers must rely on demand forecasts, assumptions, and at times even intuition to manage inventory in order to serve customers effectively, but also to minimize the costs associated with unsold inventory.